Hello everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our second navigation lesson. We're going to be discussing maps and charts for aviation use and how to interpret them. Let's discuss a couple method how aviation charts are made. So one of the issues that we have is that the earth is round, or I, I hope you believe that the earth is round, and we need to project it onto a flat surface, onto a map. It doesn't make much sense to go flying with a globe or anything like that, that would be kind of silly. So there are a couple of projections that we use. So if we think of a globe and inside of the globe, uh, we have, let's say a light, and then we project that light, whatever's on the globe, onto a cylinder that is surrounding the globe. So the, the first, way we can do that is what we call with a transverse mercator projection. These uh, transverse mercator projection are used for visual terminal area charts and what we do is that we essentially have a cylinder around the uh, outside of the earth with the uh, horizontal with the axes of the of the cylinder going let's say east to west and then we would project out what we see and you'll see a lot of maps our uh, transverse mercator and one of the issues is that it does distort things at the poles so for example you will often see that greenland uh, is the same size as australia if you look at your world map at home whereas in actual fact greenland is much much smaller than australia land mass wise and um, but this does work well for uh, visual terminal area charts which are which are quite um, which are quite a small area. And in a visual terminal area chart, are all the meridians of longitude will end up being parallel. So that, that is a, an advantage. So because uh, all of the lines of longitude are parallel, a line on a transverse mercator is a rum line. So remember it crosses all lines of longitude at the same angle. A VTA visual terminal area chart has a scale of one to 250,000. So one inch equals four nautical miles. And uh, VTAs are only available for busy terminal airspace. So in Canada, you can only get a VTA for let's say Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary. You're not going to be able to find a VTA for uh, Thunder Bay because it's just not busy enough. Uh, they're quite rare. Most people don't actually end up using them, uh, but they are available. Second type of projection is a Lambert conic conformal projection. And this is the projection that's used for visual navigation charts, VNCs, which is the most common chart that you will be using uh, as, a, as a pilot. It's used for almost all VFR navigation. And the way it is formed is if we take a cone and put it on the earth, now put a light in the center of the earth and then project the earth onto a cone and then we unwrap the cone we end up with a Lambert conic conformal projection. A VNC has a scale of one to 500,000. So one inch equals eight nautical miles. So you should uh, remember that. And because it's a cone, eventually all the lines of longitude would converge on one point. There are a number of topographical symbols that we are going to go through uh, at this time. You can reference the cover of your VNC. So maybe get out your VNC and uh, let's go through them and uh, they'll give you a good reference. So let's go through some of these uh, topographical symbols. So let's do an easy one first. What's this right here? Okay, so that's an airport. You can see the layout of the runways on large, um, large airports. And then we have this right here. That's an aerodrome uh, that's oh Hain Field sounds like me uh, that's my aerodrome that's where I live and it is a uh, circle and you can see a few other ones Martin's Landing it's a friend of mine Kekebeka Falls right here and El Dorado Beach it's another friend of mine there we have uh, yellow areas this is Thunder Bay the city of Thunder Bay you can see the yellow area and then you have small towns which are just circles okay and these are all sorts of there are like collections of houses sometimes if you go to let's say south gillies down here it's like four houses or something whereas if you go to amethyst harbor right here that's like 100 or 200 houses obviously we have lakes that should be pretty obvious 
We have, uh, what else? We already talked about control zones, things like that. Oh, here up here, let's, these are power lines. These are high tension lines. So the, the big hydro lines goes from a provincial park, Silver Falls Provincial Park. There's a uh, hydroelectric dam. Let's see if I can find uh, train tracks. See these lines right here? Right here, that's a train track. I'm just following beside it. We have towers. The tower is the elevation uh, in ASL and AGL are given. ASL is in the top, AGL is in brackets on the bottom. Obviously, we have highways. Something that's important to note about highways is it's all relative. Just because a highway is a certain size in, let's say, southern Ontario, the same highway may or may not be on the map in Thunder Bay, for example. So in Thunder Bay, there's a lot fewer roads than there are in Southern Ontario. So almost every road, every main road in the country, like let's say we're right here in this area. These are most of the roads that are out here. There might be some small side roads that won't be on here for congestion, but a road with this amount of traffic would never be on a map in Southern Ontario because the whole map would be covered in roads. Okay, so it's important to note. So you, you can look at the sides of a road, like most, you know, what we call a highway would be on a, on the, um, on a map, both in Southern Ontario and Northern Ontario. But the, like a little road like this here, that's like a really small side road. That's a gravel road somewhere. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. So you're not only looking for roads, but you're also looking at features in roads. So let's say we're in this area. A good feature would be this curve. You would see that this road all of a sudden makes this big curve. It's a highway, it makes a curve. That's something to look for. T intersections are also excellent uh, to, to orient yourself. So let's talk about elevation and contours. Contour lines join places of equal elevation. So here's a map from the, or a chart from the, I believe Vancouver VNC, and you can see all of these topographical features. Uh, and as you go up in elevation, the color changes. And then there are spot heights right here, 46, 41 feet. And then each one of these lines, these uh, contour lines are, uh, are indicated. Sometimes they're indicated here, like this is 2000 feet. And sometimes you just look at the color and reference the um, legend on the front of the map. You can find aeronautical information uh, typically in the Canada Flight Supplement. Canada Flight Supplement is kind of like a phone book for um, airports. It's in alphabetical order and they're, it's getting somewhat unwieldy, like it's a massive book now. So most people just put it online. Uh, you just put it, there's no use carrying this big phone book around anymore. So you, uh, yeah, it's all online or it is, uh, you just download it on your phone. But I'll just go through here some of the features that you can look at. So we have Fox Harbor, Nova Scotia, and here's the identifier, CFH4. There's some reference right here. We have our coordinates, okay, our variation. Okay, this actually here, 1.5, that's the distance from the town, the UTC, the time correction, the elevation, and then these are the maps that you can find this airport on, okay? Maps, the VNC and things like that, who operates it. Uh, these are like, um, you can look up online what these codes are. I don't have them memorized, but it will say like, B will be something like available at the airport, and one would be fuel, two would be oil, let's say, five might be maintenance, I'm not sure, and then D might be in town, and four might be, I don't know what it is, hotel, let's just say. But there's a bunch of different services that are available. Um, and uh, and you're just gonna look that up in the legend of the Canada Flight Supplement. Uh, flight planning information. So who you call to file a flight plan. Here are the services are available. Okay, they have fuel, jet A is available, limited operators contact, or limited hours contact the operator. Here's the runway data, the runway, the heading, and the distance and surface. The lighting, you can look up these codes as well if you want to, it'll just tell you. This one's important, RCAL. For some reason this isn't in the syllabus, but you should be aware of it. That's aerodrome radio controlled uh, or something, automatic radio controlled aerodrome lighting, I think it stands for. And what it is, is type K. So 
you just type it or go on 122.2, that frequency, and you click your mic button like five times, and then it turns the lights on automatically for the runway. So that's important to know, uh, know about uh, how to get the light if you're flying at night, how to turn the lights on. The aerodrome traffic frequency right here, it's 122.2. And then there's some caution, okay? So it tells you about trees, there's a hangar, um, there's high performance aircraft, not required to use by night, but high performance aircraft, yeah, optical illusion, turbulence, wildlife. Yeah, there's a bunch of cautions that you need to be aware of. There's actually quite a famous crash here. Mm, I think it was a, a, a Global Express, uh, Bombardier Global Express, I think, that crashed about 10 years ago here in Fox Harbor. A uh, bunch of issues, one of them being unqualified pilots, if I recall. Uh, you can look that up if you want. Over here, if we go up here to the um, the aerodrome chart, it just tells us the airport, the and then some of the surrounding features here, and then within five nautical miles, the minimum safe altitudes here, how high the obstacles are around it. So we just discussed this. A VNC has a one to five hundred thousand uh, scale, so one inch equals eight nautical miles, and a VTA has. Uh, one to 250,000 scale, one inch equals four miles. This is gonna come in really handy. You're gonna be flying with a VNC almost all the time and you have to guess how far the distance is. <clears throat> so you just look at how many inches it is and you can uh, get a pretty good uh, guess that way or you can just uh, figure out that distance against the lines of uh, of latitude, one inch or one, uh, one nautical mile equals one minute of uh, of uh, latitude. Okay, one of the things you'll be expected to do on your exam is uh, pick out a point based on the uh, the uh, coordinates. So here's again Thunder Bay map, and we'll just take a look down here. That's 48 degrees, I believe, and then your lines of uh, of longitude. We'll zoom here. Okay, so. Here's 49 degrees, okay? And then the next one down, this is, if you count all the tick marks, it will be 30. So this would be 48 degrees and 30 minutes, okay? And then right here, we'd have 48 degrees, 40 minutes, 48 degrees, 50 minutes, and then 49. And then the same kind of principle here is 90, okay? And here's 91. So we mark these ticks. You're gonna have 60 uh, meridians or 60 minutes of uh, longitude in between there. So a question might go like this. It'll be like, find the, tell me what is located at 48 degrees, 39 minutes north and west 90 degrees, uh, 37 minutes. So if you click your way up, 37 minutes here, you'd end up, oh, it's a tower. And so you have to figure out, and then, you know, A, B, C, D will be, uh, you know, it's a tower or something like that. Here are some navigation aids uh, on a map. One is the Vortec, the VOR and TACAN on the bottom, and then the top is a NDB, non-directional beacon, and you can take a look at your legend. It'll tell you everything that you need to know right there. So a couple types of map, the transverse locator projection is in visual terminal area only. A straight line is a rum line. The Lambert conic conformal projection uh, is used for the VNC, so a scale of one to 500,000 and a straight line is a great circle. There's also a map we talk, we didn't talk about the WAC, the wide area chart. Uh, that scale is one to a million. Uh, never seen anyone use them before. Uh, they're just like these massive maps. They're used for high speed, high altitude VFR navigation. I don't know who flies VFR at high speed and high altitude. Uh, so I think they're still made, but uh, never, never seen one, but they're found in some textbooks. Okay, here's a good question because it requires you to know a couple points of information. A, a straight line is drawn on a VNC. Extending this line across the whole earth would, so remember a straight line on a VNC is a great circle. So what is a great circle? Well, a great circle is the shortest distance between two points and it would bisect the earth into two. So the correct answer, A, it would split the earth in two. 
The distance measured between two points on a VNC is two inches. How many nautical miles is the distance? So remember on a VNC, one inch equals eight miles. So two inches is 16 miles. So 16 miles is the correct answer. And it's not dependent on the latitude because remember each parallel of latitude is exactly the same. Each minute is going to be one nautical mile. What is the arrow pointing to? A, a campsite. Well, it looks that way, but no, that's not a campsite. B, a tower is the correct answer. C, it's not multiple towers, it's just one. And D, none of the above. So the correct answer is B, a tower. So here's a bit of a math question. What is the elevation at the base of the tower? So how do we find out the elevation? So remember the top number, 1750, that's the height above sea level of the top of the tower. And then the one in brackets below it, 300 feet, is the top of the tower AGL. So if we wanna find the elevation at the base of the tower, we would take 1750, subtract 300, and that would be 1,450 feet. I hope that's pretty clear to you how we did that math. Um, maybe I'll just draw it out here. Here's the earth. Here is the tower, okay? This distance right here is 300 feet, okay? Then we have our C somewhere way down here. This distance is 1,750. Okay, so the difference between these two is going to be 1450. Okay, so that's the elevation above sea level. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this uh, lesson. Uh, we'll see you in our next lesson. We're just gonna talk about uh, time and longitude in the next lesson. Thanks for joining me.